1.4 million. That's the estimated number of foreigners currently living across Korea. In the past decade, the foreign population has tripled. It's also become more diverse as more people immigrate for various reasons, such as love, work, and school. And to help foreigners adjust their lives in South Korea is the goal of this monthly publication, Ten Magazine. I read it every month to see what's going on, to see what restaurants to go to, where are the friendly places for expats to go, and the activities that we can do while we're here. If you need to know anything from history to activities, daily activities, if you need a place to go on the weekends, just read the magazine. It's a lot of help. Finding all those little things that you want, as you know, that you miss from back home. Um, you know, the food, especially. I think you know the articles. There's a lot of history um, stories in there that are very insightful about Korea. So I think whether you're living here or visiting here, it's um, very useful information to uh, live by. Launched in 2008, TED Magazine is based in Seoul. Stephen Revere is the founder of this English language guide to all things Korea. Yeah, originally, uh, I was doing something with the publishing industry, and at one point, uh, a friend of mine came to me and said, uh, you know, hey, I have this magazine here from Shanghai, and in Shanghai, this is the foreigner's Bible. This is the expat Bible. This is what people love to read because they can find out everything happening. Touted as the number one English resource in Korea, TED Magazine features a comprehensive list of the latest happenings nationwide, such as festivals, films, and food, among others. I was really thinking that there's foreigners who live all over this country. Uh, you know, there's 4,000 foreigners in Kojedo, that little island. They're all working in the shipyards there. So uh, uh, I decided that it would be a great idea if we had a magazine that everybody, no matter where they lived, could be could use. Uh, people living in Seoul could use to find out what's happening in the other areas of the country. In addition to expatriates, the magazine targets foreign visitors so that they too can make the most out of their stay in Korea. Revere offers unique insights into the nation from a foreign perspective. Because our magazine doesn't talk much about things that are past. We only talk about things that are in the future, things that are upcoming. So I want people when they pick up a 10 magazine to go, oh, this really has a lot of information about what I can do in this month. Uh, so it's a little different from other magazines that often talk about what happened or what some star did or what's over. Our magazine is only about what's coming up. Okay. Good. Yeah, could you go? Content for the magazine is generated by a core group of six reporters and three interns. <laughs> <laughs> to appeal to readers from all walks of life, all aspects of life in Korea are covered through extensive planning meetings. I've always been impressed by Stephen's um, dedication to living in Korea and making the most of his time here. Working with several magazines, uh, doing a lot in media, publishing books, and just to, in general he's a very impressive person and um, I've always admired his charisma. Born in 1971, Revere hails from the U.S. state of California. He grew up wanting to explore the world. Well, in 1995, I was a young guy, just graduated from uh, college, and I went to uh, Europe on a trip in the summer, had a wonderful time in Europe, and I decided I think I want to spend some time uh, living in another country. And so I uh, found a job uh, teaching English in South Korea. By successfully juggling work and study, Revere became the first foreigner to secure a master's degree in teaching Korean from the prestigious Yonsei University. 
From starring in TV programs to authoring books, Revere has been busy putting his knowledge and know-how to use. Thank you. Hello, Lisa. Anyaseo. I'm Stephen Revere. Great expression. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So I had, I had already spent almost every year. I thought the next year I was going to. As many expats and many foreigners who come to Korea do, you think you're going to leave in a year, but then you end up extending one more year and then another year. And so I was telling my mom for for about eight years. I told my mom. I'll be coming home next year, and then finally, about eight years into it, she said, "Whatever, don't worry about it. Don't tell me that anymore." For 17 years and counting, Seoul has been Revere's home away from home. These days, he's rarely alone, even on work assignments. Chip always tags along. Uh, uh, Oh, ah, come oh, on, say hi, Chip. Say hi. With Chip by his side, yeah. Revere finds yeah. that people open up to him more. When out and about, yeah. Revere misses nothing because he's always on the lookout for new stories and ideas. Yeah, uh, every single month we do a. Uh, a analysis of what the readers liked and what they enjoyed. We do a survey, and we're always trying to get ideas from our readers. So, um, any chance that we can hear from someone who is a Ten Magazine fan, we always like to get more, uh, more and more input into how we can make a better magazine. Whenever possible, Revere also makes a point of following up on his stories by revisiting the establishments featured in his magazine. Such visits apparently help Revere gauge his readers' needs better. Yeah, when we opened up, we were immediately busy on weekends because many South African people knew our sausage. But uh, after advertising in, or after the article in Ten Magazine, uh, many more people started coming in a week. Lately, Revere has been involved in another major project. He's been working with the Seoul Club of the International Association of Travel and Tourism Professionals, known as Skull International. High on their agenda is this year's Skull World Congress, scheduled to be hosted by Korea in October. Ten Magazine is doing this year, World Congress, is doing this year's Skull World Congress, and is doing this year's Skull World Congress. We have never had a World Congress happen in Korea, and for the first time in the many, many years, the many decades of Skull's history, the World Congress is going to be in Korea in October. So we're trying to make sure that many people come from Skull from all over the world to participate. So what I think, depending on the... <laughs> a true Korean at heart? Revere wants to promote South Korea not just as a place to visit, but as a place to live. And don't forget to explain about the Songdo. Yeah, I, I, my dream for all our readers is for them to pick up Ten Magazine and go, oh my gosh, I had no idea there were so many things happening. I had no money, idea there were so many things to participate and join and do in Korea. And uh, we get that reaction a lot. His love for Korea is evident in his writings. And by sharing his insights, Revere hopes to bridge the cultural divide between foreigners and Koreans. Inside. My name is Mark Broom and I'm a news anchor here at Arirang TV and I've been living in Korea for about five and a half years. South Korea basically says that the EC should be given its uh, historical and geographically appropriate name 
which is the EC, um, whereas Japan is sticking by its guns saying that it wants the sea to remain as the Sea of Japan exclusively, whereas Korea is asking for the joint use of the EC and also the Sea of Japan. Korean, the Korean representatives at the IHO meeting are basically one of the, the main points of their argument is that the Sea of Japan was introduced at a time when Japan was the colonial ruler of Korea and um, so when the name was decided Korean representatives and Korea had no voice in that meeting to say that we would like very much for the sea to be also called the East Sea and so ever since that time Korea has from time to time tried to raise the issue at the IHO um, but has yet been unsuccessful in getting a joint name for the sea. East Sea is in east of the Asian Peninsula and east of Korea and also east of China then you know that's a, a good reason for the sea to be also called the East Sea. I think if Korea were able to get the joint name of the East Sea and also the Sea of Japan, it would go some way to erasing part of the legacy of Japan's imperialist uh, rule over Korea and also recognize the fact that for centuries and centuries, millions and millions of Koreans have referred to the sea as the East Sea, which is something that international organizations state in some of their uh, statements in so much that if people refer, mass group of people refer to a body of water as a certain name, then that, that name should be recognized internationally on maps.